What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, John McGeertz, and in this episode, I'm going to help you try to grow wealth, okay? I know I've been gone for a few days, but I've been trying to... I've been stuck, you know? This is something I've been really trying to scratch my brain about, and um, I don't have any, like, business models or really bring anything to the table that's really unique um, that other people aren't. Like, I would look up... The first way to grow wealth, then, would be look up Alex Hermosi, Layla Hermosi, other people like that. They're doing really good at how to start businesses and, like, generate income. and They teach a lot of things about business that are applicable in your real life, but... The angle I think I want to hit is um, I didn't want to be this kind of guy, but I guess I got to kind of be this kind of guy because I feel like the only thing I know a lot about is Christianity. And uh, I didn't want to become a Christian channel, but I feel also – so then the 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 the, um, the compromise I've made is I don't want to be a Christian channel. I'm not trying to push my belief on anybody else, but there is a lot in Christianity I feel does like inherently help you grow wealth. So that's the type of stuff I want to focus my how to build wealth content on. It, it's going to be like stuff from Christianity. I was even pushed back on my um, atheist brother. Uh, why don't you just use the good things from Christianity and then leave the bad things out? And I agree. You know what I mean? I don't think there's anything wrong with Christianity, really. But yeah. So I mean, like, you don't have to be a Christian to use the ethics that are inside of Christianity or the um, the concepts or the wisdom or the the power of the wisdom that's in the book from, cause you know, a lot of the Bible's books were written by Kings, people of power. And those people had knowledge written down and they try to distill it to a way that would, was the commoner could, could, could understand. So with that being said, hopefully um, let's, let's talk about the most famous book from the Bible, which actually got me on my journey on how to start building wealth. Uh, I saw on this uh, website that a lot of people study this book and it's called Proverbs. Uh, so Proverbs, hopefully you can read that pretty good. The first, chapter let's just talk about that so i can break it down for you guys because uh, a lot of the bible is really hard to understand it's very thick you have to read it multiple times to really get it and then or just be taught about it and stuff like that so then this is going to be my take um i'm just going to read this to you guys and try to like explain the basic premise of proverbs because this is the whole this is the 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 first piece of logic from the entire book which kind of unlocks everything else if you can't move past this verse in the bible you really can't move past, you can't understand really the complexity of the book at all or like really I don't know. I don't want to like ramble too much on about it, but it's really, really important that we nail down this first verse or not first verse, but this first um, section here. I feel like this is um, very, very important. It's the purpose and the theme of the entire book, obviously. So, you know what I mean? So let's just talk about it. Um, and then, you know, this will be like an introductory, how to grow wealth. Uh, yeah. So it's going to be kind of freestyle. This one's probably not going to be super SEO, super retention um, focused because I don't really care about that, I guess. Um, I'm just trying to go back to making consistent content again. So if you click off, you've probably already clicked off by now, so that's fine. Anyway, those of you who are still here, this is very important. And I don't, I may not know specifically how to grow wealth, but I know the Bible does. So if I teach you this parts, these parts of the Bible are the parts of the Bible that will help you grow wealth. Again, you don't need to be a Christian to use these. You know what I mean? This is, it's, it's true regardless if it's Christian or not. Or whatever. I mean... If you, it's true whether you're a Christian or not. Okay, so let, let's just break this down. I got to stop selling it and just get to it. Anyway, so number one, the Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. So I don't know if you know anything about the Bible, but Solomon is the richest king in Jewish Jewish history. I guess they claim that. He had like so much, um, he had so much wealth that silver was had no value. He had so much gold that silver had no value. That's like one of the things. Solomon had a lot of money and he had a lot of, he had spent a lot of money. Anyway, he's got a lot of money. He, he spent a lot of money. He, he's the richest uh, Jewish king from the history of the Jew, the Jews. Um, and he's the son of David, who is like, whatever. You know, there's a lot of lore here. King of Israel. Okay. Second line, for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight. This is the uh, purpose and the theme. Uh, so the purpose and theme of Proverbs, for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight. So, you know what I mean? Wisdom is what you do with facts to derive value. Like it's like moral slash like, a, like applying facts to an objective to get a desired result. Like what is what, what you ought to do. That's what wisdom is. Like it's not, there's what to do, you know, that's the facts and learning the world. But wisdom is like what you ought to do and what you ought to do means like, cause a lot of people get hung up on the morality argument or whatever, but what you ought to do is just mainly like pick an objective and then wisdom will tell you the best way to use facts and knowledge to get that objective. That's what wisdom is. Okay. At least in this context, um, for gaining wisdom and instruction, instruction is knowledge. So instruction is just like taught like experiences of people who are here before you. 
um, so you don't make the same mistakes they make. You know what I mean? That's the whole point of coaches and stuff like that. So that's what that is. Uh, for understanding, understanding is like you feel it. You don't just, you don't, like you understand it. You feel it. It feels right to you. It it makes sense. You can take the, the, uh, the whatever and it, you can apply it to situations. You know, it. it's like a tool. It becomes a tool. It's like when something becomes like a tool, code, tool, whatever. Uh, words of insight. For understanding words of insight. You know what I mean? Okay. See what I mean? Okay. Uh, third verse for receiving instruction and in prudent behavior. Let's look up the word prudent. One of those words we should look up. Prudent is... Uh, okay. So this is a word that is tied to a lot of... Um, Science, I've, this is this is pinging studies in my head. Uh, prudent is acting with or showing care and thought for the future. So that, you know, like they talk about like smart people think about long term. So then again, receiving instruction in long term success behavior. Okay, easy peasy. All right, we're moving along. Doing what is right and just and fair. Okay, so it's not just right. Uh, doing what is these three things. And they have to be tied together. It can't just be right. It has to be right and just and fair. So that's telling you the context here. From my interpretation here, again, I could be wrong, but I'm probably not. Okay, anyway. So doing what is right and just and fair, they're all tied together. So that, you know, like if we made this math, it'd be X, uh, Y, the, there's the and word is, is a plus sign. And then these are whatever. Um, and they equal... Uh, thing. You can't see that. Anyway, let me move that out there. Okay. So that's not that important, but yeah. So again, purpose and theme. Okay. I'm just trying to make sure, I'm just trying to explain this, break this down verse by verse just so this all makes sense. Okay. Um, and if it's too world, word salad I'm sorry. This is just like my first attempt at it. And I'm trying to do it in a relatively small amount of time. But anyway, so then verse four is for giving prudence to those who are simple so this is like, again, like I was saying before, Solomon's trying to, like the kings from the Bible are trying to distill this down in a way that stupid people can understand. That like, I love that word simple. I've been trying to use it now because I used to say, and forgive my language, I used to call people like retards or dumb or idiot or something like that. But those are like negative connotations for those things. When it's not, it's not inherently wrong to be dumb. People are smart and people are dumb. So I think like, like the nicest way to call like a dumb person what they are not dumb. You know what I mean? You see how it's like loaded? Like it's like intuitively loaded with that negative uh, emotion. I just think calling people simple and complex or whatever. I think those are just, you know, more um, neutral ways of going about it. But anyway, that's who he's trying to help is the simple minded, simple minded people. Um, we're giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. So um, young people are simple. They don't have a lot of experience to form complexities, uh, complexness to them. So this is, he's trying to help those people out. He's trying to help them avoid mistakes going into the future so that they can become more successful than him, which you could argue today, like people like me are more successful than Solomon because of the access to resources and technology that we have that he would never even imagine having access to. Anyway, but it's still helpful. Uh, verse five, let the wise listen and add to their learning. And let the discerning get guidance for understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and the riddles of the wise. Okay. This is all pretty important. That's why I decided to read it all together. So it's saying that even if you do have some experience, do have some wisdom and stuff like this, you're still going to get some value out of it. Um, so it is very important. You know what I mean? Um, let the wise listen and add to the learning because there's always something to learn. Part of being wise is understanding that like having a core humility about your intelligence is like the more you know you know what i mean the smartest you've heard that you've seen the facebook quotes the smartest people in the world are the ones that realize that they don't really know anything you know what i mean people who are smart they think they're dumber than they actually are but dumb people actually you know whatever okay okay i'm not gonna get too hung up on the uh, uh the wordage there but you know dumb people you know the uh what is that one effect the the whatever effect where you the where you think you know more you're confident because you're dumb you don't know how much you don't know and then there's like a curve and whatever not that important um but yeah so the discerning get guidance um for the understanding proverbs and parables 
for the sayings and riddles of the wise because a lot of people, I do this a lot. I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but when I'm trying to explain something to somebody, I usually try to like grab it from a metaphor, which directly applies to the person I'm talking to, like a shared experience so that I can easily communicate an idea or more easily communicate an idea. Because if you can, if you can tie like the, the sayings and the riddles of the wise or whatever, um, it's like trying to take a bunch of simple, complex things, simple things that you would need to say so much to explain a complex thing. Kind of like what I'm doing with this video. Like I'm taking a bunch of like, I'm I'm trying to simplify complex concepts with a lot of words so that it kind of makes sense and just kind of just like I'm trying to chink it like I'm trying to imagine somebody out there who doesn't know anything about this and I'm trying to chink at their head and just like really till the soil that's their head. See what I mean? So that I can get some get this into their head better, uh, better retention or whatever. Because we're reading along, I'm trying to explain it so that there's multiple avenues that this is getting into your head. Da 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 da. -da. That's like. The purpose of this book is going to be how to understand proverbs and parables and the sayings and the riddles of the wise, da, 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 whatever. I think I kind of butchered that one, but I think that one's kind of self-explanatory too. But uh, number seven, the fear of the Lord. This is the one that people get the most hung up on. And I probably should have just talked about this to begin with, but whatever, I'm just making the video. Um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. I've gotten in fights with my brother about this a lot. Um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So um, this one, I don't think that's too contentious. I think if you're a fool, you hear this and you're going to get triggered by that because whatever you do, you know, if you are a fool and, you know, the shoe fits, this is a shoe fit statement. But the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. I've also gotten into a, a disagreement with a, another friend about this because um, I believe this wholeheartedly. And after, you know, I, it weighed on me for a long time. I prayed and meditated on it a lot. My, um, the fear of the Lord means that you are scared of something like fear is like the beginning of respect. So like, uh, the best way I can think of this, the first thing that comes to my mind is that like, um, you don't care about talking crap to people until somebody's like, say you talk crap to the wrong person and then they're kicking in your door and then they got a gun to your head. Like, um, it's the beginning it's the beginning of respect and like to have, like to really learn about things to, to want to learn to knowledge about things. You sometimes you need to f like fear it. I don't know. Not sometimes. I, I believe all like respect starts as fear. Like, you know, fire, you don't, like, there's a better one. Uh, as a child, if you, you don't respect fire or dangerous things until you get injured by them. Uh, but then you learn, like, then you start respecting you're like, Oh my God, what the hell just happened? Oh my God. And then boom. Now you are fearing fire, so now you become knowledgeable about it. That's what this means. So this, you know, my chopped up version of my, my Christian Bible. You know what I mean? You don't need to be Christian to know any of this or like to, to apply any of this to your life. You, just, you can just kind of trust this and it's going to be true. It's going to like if you start and this is the start, you know, step one, you know what I mean? When you lift weights, the first time you lift weights, you don't really get any uh, results from it. But growing wealth is a lot of things that are like growing wealth is like weightlifting. A lot of the things you do in the beginning, you don't see, nothing makes sense. When I first started saving a dollar or a, like 50 cents worth of change um, in my wallet like six, seven years ago, six years ago, uh, I started saving change in my wallet. I did not expect it to lead for me, lead to me getting a house because I learned to save money, but it started off as nothing. But then over time, incrementally growing, like, you know, bodybuilders who lift weights for a long time. I was able to amass amount of wealth to be able to get a house. And that's the same thing. It's going to be this process here. Oh, sorry. This process here is like the start of Proverbs. Like if you, like if you, if I can convince you to take anything from the Bible, um, like I know there's a lot of contention with the Bible, the whole slavery thing or whatever, or whatever people say about the Bible, the Bible's evil, it's misogynist, it's evil, it's blah, 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 blah. Throw all that aside, all that, whatever, you know, the afterlife, heaven and hell and stuff like that. If you just like, threw every book out of the Bible and then just like read Proverbs and just like studied it and made it like your thing, you would, you'd become more wealthy. You would just, just knowing the stuff in the book. Like even if you read it for one time and you remembered one line, one thing in the book of Proverbs is going to tell you, um, it's going to make you more valuable. It's going to make you more wealthy. Just 
just all the code. Like it'll reprogram your brain just enough that wherever you're at, you're going to be a little bit more wealthy. So that's my video today. Really butchered, really chopped up. Thanks for watching. Um, if you made it this far, you should probably subscribe to my channel. Um, but I'm going to really, I think I'm just going to turn, you know, the how to grow wealth series. And this is going to be, because I do think the best way to grow wealth is through biblical uh, principles. Because I mean, best argument for it is look at the Jews. The Jews' biggest stereotype is they have a lot of money. So, all right. See you later. Thank you.